Hello and welcome to a new Svelte Kit tutorial. This time we're gonna look at 10 stack table. That's a pretty cool table component that allows us to create rich and filterable tables. As you can see here, we have a search, we have facet filters on the left and yeah, we can also sort it and stuff. And it's a really cool library. It's, I know it from, from React, it was first React table and uh, in the last few years, um, he changed it so we can use it also in Svelte. I hope you enjoy the video. So we want to start off by adding a new page and for that we're gonna create a new navigation menu entry to our invoices page. And uh, next, yeah, it's, it's added nice. So next we're gonna go ahead and create a route and call it invoices, like our link leads to. And in there, of course, we add a server function and a page uh, file, so page.svelte and page.server.ts. And in the server file, we're gonna just return our invoices from the database. And for that, we need to create a new database function called get invoices, just a basic query here, where we query all the invoices. And we need to create a new type for the invoices and um, need to import that so we can return it. And lastly, um, the page server function works. Now we need to create the page, just uh, import the page data type and export the data. And we create a small header. And uh, at the last, we for now gonna uh, just uh, print the JSON on the page. So this works fine, great. To create our 10 stack table, we need to first install the module for it. Um, and if it's done, we can now go ahead and um, import some stuff, uh, like our type, some functions from 10 stack table, writable from Svelte store, and also some 10 stack table types. And with that, we're gonna create a columns array of the type column dev and our invoice type. And in here we can then add objects that define our table columns. We have XSR key that access the data attribute, a header name and the cell is just uh, how we want to get or display the value. So we also add a date column in here. Next, we're gonna create a new object of, um, it's actually a Svelte writable of the type table options and that has a type of invoice. And in there we can add a data attribute where we can input our data array, our invoices. Then we put our column definitions in there and also the get core raw model that we imported from the 10 stack table. Now we move the data a little bit up so our TypeScript doesn't um, alarms us. And now we can call create Svelte table and get the table in a variable. Now we can delete our uh, JSON and actually create a table. Uh, we're gonna use the get header groups function for an array that's provided from our table variable. And in there we can then render for each um, header group a table row. So we can multiple, have multiple header groups. In there we have um, another array of headers actually and for each we gonna make a th and inside the th we can check if this is a placeholder column and if not we can call the svelte component function with the flex render in there and now this is a very specific uh, or a complex setup how you can do this but it offers us really nice and great flexibility as we can just add columns and it's automatically um, get added to the table so we never have to actually modify the setup here. So I recommend you to check out the code uh, in the link in the comments below and just uh, copy the whole setup. We have uh, nearly the same structure for our body. We again get an array for each row with a get row model function. And in there we can then render um, rows and we loop over visible cells. Again, call this flex render function. And in the end, we get this beautiful table rendered for us. 
Now I'm adding all the other columns uh, from our data because we just uh, read the first two and um, see how this looks. And we have a complete table now and look how the total value looks. Uh, it's a currency value, but it's not really formatted as one. So I think we should go ahead in the back end and we can create a new number format with the international number format function. And we pass currency euro and style currency and the German settings. And in there we can go to the total column of our column definitions and change the cell renderer to this number format. And if we now look at our result, we have a formatted currency number here. Next up, let's add sorting to our uh, table. So um, we have to import a few things. Um, first, we import the get sorted raw model and the type sort direction. And now we can create a small helper function that returns an emoji based on how the table is sorted. And we're gonna use that later. Let's get to our table options here. And then we can use the get sorted raw model in here. So it enables our table to be actually sorted. And next we're gonna go to our table component and uh, here we're gonna wrap the column headers um, in a button that we can click then to sort it. And we're also gonna add some disabled states or classes you, um, because you can say some columns should not be sorted, for example. And in the span there below, we call our helper function, get sort symbol. So we show the emoji whenever a column is actually sorted currently. So let's check the result. And um, we can click on this country header and every header basically and, and if, if we click this table gets sorted and we see with the emoji how we sort the table great and now let's add another small thing we can go to our column definitions and there say to a specific column enable sorting set it to false for example and if we go then back to the page we can see that we can't click address anymore any other column we can sort but not address. So we'll just jump back to our code and now we want to add a global search to filter our table and we import get filtered raw model for this in here. And then we go to our table options down below. This in here we can uh, then first add a new global variable, the filter we set and then go to our options and set get filtered model to the imported value and set a state and this state includes the global filter value. And next up, we're gonna add a new function called set global filter. We receive the filter string in here and set the global filter variable to this value and also update our options and update the state and set the global filter value in the state to the new value of our input of the filter string. To be able to search, we add an input to the page of the type search. So we have an X and um, we add on key up and on search, we call our handle search function and we set a nice placeholder. We add the handle search function and a timer variable and we're gonna debounce our search input. So we don't gonna search every time we type or in every keystroke, we wait 300 milliseconds and then start the filter process. We also get this nasty TypeScript error here that it says I can't use or call this function on search. This is wrong. So I have a small hack for this. I'm gonna create this const no type check a thing uh, with a type any and return any and add this to the input and then TypeScript won't uh, throw that error. If you have any clue how to fix this error the correct way, please let me know in the comments. Thanks. Now let's check the result and um, I'm gonna open the console here because we actually get an error. And uh, if I'm gonna search something, we get the uh, type error on the to lowercase call. And unfortunately, 10 stack table currently expects every column to be a string. 
I don't know if this will be fixed in the future, but for now we can uh, change our columns in here. We look at this invoice type and we have the date, uh, the ID and the total. These are not strings, these are numbers. And we have to migrate them to strings now. To do that, we can just change, uh, remove the accessor key property and use accessor function. So we get the whole row and can then go row.id and then call to string to just convert the number to string. We also don't need this cell attribute. It's only for representation. The accessor function is how the table receives its values for the right column. Again, we do the same stuff for the total column. Um, I first comment that number format and use accessor function. Again, receive the row in the function and return row.total and then wrap that in the format. Now let's check the result here and um, gonna reload the page. And if we search for daily, we actually get our filtered results, great. But I think we can improve on that. Um, I don't like this way uh, that we have to do everything as string. So let's return uh, that and just use the numbers as really number data types as before. And we're gonna add a little fuzzy search that knows how to deal with numbers and also lets us do yeah fuzzy searching with special characters and stuff. For that, we're gonna add a new module, 10 stack match sorter utils. And if we have that installed, we can go ahead and import it or first import the filter function type and then import the rank item function from this module we installed. Go down below to our options and in there we're gonna create a function, a custom function that does a global filter. And in there we're gonna receive some stuff from the table and we're gonna call the rank item function with the current value. Um, and this does some magic in the background and in the end returns for each row if it actually matches the filter. And um, now we need to only go to the options and actually define this custom filter function as our search function. And now let's check the results. So we're gonna Go to our page, refresh, and do you see this this Prague address, Rilska, with the special character? Um, with our fuzzy search features, we actually don't need to type that special character, and then A also matches this, and I think this is a better search experience. So now let's add some uh, filters, column-specific filters, to our uh, table. For that, we import the facet functions here. And of course, again, we're gonna need to add them to our options object. And now I'm gonna create or um, store the header groups in a variable because we're gonna reuse them. And in our um, table header, we're gonna access the variable. And now I'm gonna do some layout changes. Basically, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and do add a little column to the left of the table. And I'm doing that with uh, some Balmas CSS classes, one fifth, and loop over the headers again, and then only filter out the country header column. And for now, just print the value country in here. And now we move, uh, we wrap the whole table with the search input in also a column and now that's done we can see that we have a left column here with where we can add the filters we want to use next on we're going to create a small component and i'm going to do it in the lib folder with the component subfolder and in there we're going to create a svelte file called facet checkboxes.svelte i'm going to paste some code here we're going to go over it in soon but let's for now just see what it does and in, uh, use them in our um, in our page where the, we put it the text now you can see we get this nice facets um, we see the values of countries how often they appear and they have some checkboxes on them so we can click and filter them 
So let's have a look at this component. We export the column and the table. So we can then use a function, get top five facets. Uh, we actually return more than that, but uh, we go get the column, get the unique facet values. So we get each value of that column and then create an array from that map. It returns a map. We sort that array so we get the most used one and return the top five use the next 20 and a boolean that says whether there are more rows actually. We store the result of that function in a variable and create um, and, and then loop over our top five first and create a list of the checkboxes for them. Then for the next 20 we wrap them in a detailed summary so we can collapse and open them and um, in the end put a notice if there are more than the 25 we show that there are more but uh, we don't display them basically. Uh, when we click on anything we have this handle check function and a check called set and we just add the column uh, the checklist name to the set we have and in the end call set filter value on the column and create an array from the set. So let's test if this works and um, as you can see I'm open the console it actually will throw an error and it's the same error we've seen before it's the it can't call to lowercase on the value and that's because we of course return array of values that are checked and uh, our basic filter function does not know how to treat an array. We can easily fix that by just going to our global filter function and adding some array handling lines we first check if there is actually an array pass as a value we check if it's empty we return true because we don't want to filter an empty array and otherwise we check the if the value is contained in the array now we're gonna move this function up a little bit above the columns and the reason for that is we're gonna have to say for our country column we say that the filter function used should be the global filter filter function uh, the one that actually supports arrays. So if we save that and go to our page, we can then check USA and see that we get a filter table create. We can also do multiple ones. And additionally, the filters can be combined with the search. So we can search for friends or Frank and also get the Francis street next to results for friends. And we can still use the filters and the search both at the same time. And because we extracted our um, filter, facet filter into a component, we can easily just add the same logic to our state column, just add the filter function, uh, the global filter function. And then in our site filter region here, we can add another else if for the column ID and then go ahead in there and paste the same content. One thing I unfortunately did not get to work is that, um, that for example, if you filter a country, the state filters should also be filtered. So they only show states for Canada. Um, so this does not work. If you have any clue how this can work, please let me know in the comments. Thanks. Let's also add a filter for our uh, number data types. And for that, we're going to create a new component, facet min max .svelt. And here we get the min and max values of each column. And we have a function here. We get these values with a function column.get faceted min max values. And we just return an object with both values in our helper function here. Um, then we get a handle value change function that we call later from our input and on the min input we set filter value and we receive the old values and there's an array with a min and a max so two numbers and we set uh, the min new min value and for the max we set the new max value and the other one of course unchanged and for rendering, we just uh, render a label and an input for each min and max number. And we have um, also the min and max attribute, so we can't go above or lower 
than the actual column values. We can just use this component um, like the other ones before. Just need to import the component here and let's have a look at the result and we can see the two inputs on the left side and we can just bump them up and you can see values being filtered out and of course from each side we can filter them out uh, by reducing now the max. Now we have only four values and we can of course still use the other filters. If you have a table with lots of lots of data it makes sense to uh, paginate it, so to add pages to your table for performance reasons and we can do that by importing that get pagination raw model and using it in our options here and additionally we have to add something to our state and this is a pagination object and we set the page size meaning how many rows are per page and the page index is the current page and we of course start with the page zero here. Next up we're going to add a new function to update our state to update our current page so we can navigate around it so we update the pagination page index value in there. Then we can go ahead below our table and I'm going to paste a lot of buttons in here first and these buttons allow the navigation. The first one here is the go to the first page so on click reset current page to zero and we can disable it if we can't go back. Another button here is just go one page back so we from the current page minus one. Then we, in the middle we have an info on which page we are and a small number input where we can actually go to a specific page. And of course we also have the buttons to go to the next pages and to the last page here. So let's check out how it looks and uh, we only get seven rows as we said and we can navigate through them. We can go to the last page, to the first page again, and we also can use this number input here to go to specific pages. Great. I'm going to paste some new stuff in here. And this is the first thing is a small select list. So we can um, define our page size or our, our how many rows are on a page. And it's just a small array from 7, 10, 25, and 50s. With, uh, and we're going to need to create a new opt, uh, new function to update our state. I called it set page size. And this function again just goes to our state and updates it. And sets the page size value. And yeah, there we are. And we also have another small info that shows us how many total rows there are in our table. And as you can see, I can change this and we get more rows and also the number of total pages, of course, reduces. Great. And the last thing we need to do is to fix this small uh, TypeScript error on the input to change the page or to a specific page. And for that, we need to create a function again so we can set the type of the event to HTML input element and just call that. And internally, this just calls our set page function. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any feedback or maybe suggestions about what I can do in video about in the future, please let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoy your day and goodbye.